Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 40 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I came uh, to start thinking about chunk loading my Create Miner, and I learned <laughs> that I literally, right smack down the middle of my, of my Miner, was the chunk boundary, uh, which is kind of dumb. If you're going to be chunk loading something, you want to pay attention to chunk boundaries. And I always forget about chunk boundaries until I'm completely done with a build. So, uh, in classic dire fashion, I uh, had to figure out how to move it. So I'm just using uh, I'm using crate to move it. it. Should be pretty straightforward to do. Uh, I might need more shafts, which I should be able to get a bunch of, no problem. Thank you. And then it should be a simple matter of you going here, putting a bunch of extension poles here, and then maybe this, maybe one more of those. There we go. And that should move the whole shebang into position, if I did it correctly. Ah, I moved it one too far. Dyer being a classic, classic Dyer. All right, I can fix that. I can fix that, he said. Uh, how are you aligned, actually? Are you good? You're like a couple blocks on that side and a couple blocks on that. I think that's actually pretty well centered in the chunk, so I want to pull that back one. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just get a sticky uh, mechanical piston here and replace this. And do this. Do you not want to do that? Okay, so now you uh, actually need these guys. And go forward, sticky piston. And if I catch it correctly, I should be able to fix this in one. Was that cool or was that too far? A little too far. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this and then I'll put you back. And now you should be good. Sweet, that's aligned correctly. Nice, good job. Now we have to test to make sure everything's still working right. But I think we're in a pretty good place with this digital mine, like this whole miner setup thing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're in a really good place with it. So let's give it a go. Uh, what I added was a timer, uh, which will run every 9,600 ticks, which is like seven minutes, I think, I wanna say? Or is it eight minutes? I don't know. Um, well, let's see what happens. And it's, and it's disabled when there is a redstone signal active. So with the lever here, it doesn't run. But with it off, it should run. Now I don't know if it'll if it'll pulse on its initial activation or not. Uh, maybe not actually. Maybe I should make that a sequencer actually. After all, uh, maybe. What sequencer options do we have for activating things? Uh, when a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once, restart if new pulse arrives, all the time, ignore, all the time, restart, loop it when present, continue at current step, or restart on no signal. Okay. Yeah, because my plan here is I want to make sure that, I think if I turn this off, it waits the whole 7200 or 9600 ticks before it'll activate, which means we have to wait like a long time which I don't want, right? Yeah, it did that because it was at 20, right? Now, if I turn you, if I do that, you're gonna be at 9,600, see? And then when I turn it off, it's gonna to have to go through the whole 900, nah, it's not gonna be great. Yeah, I don't love that plan. But overall, the logic is working correctly, right? The redstone logic is good. So we're getting all the pulsing correct. Everything's doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to, it's supposed to move forward nine blocks 
um, which it should do, and then be aligned with that quarry line, right? And then once that's done, it'll activate this guy and it'll start mining. Uh, yeah, so overall, pretty good. So if I just let this run, it should be cool. We have to pay attention to chunk loading it though. Uh, and for that, I was gonna look at this chunk loader. Now it unfortunately needs a beacon, which means we might need to get another star uh, because that's the one thing. I don't think there's any other chunk loader blocks in the pack that I can think of. Um, there's, uh, I don't see anything from Railcraft that can do it. Railcraft used to have a chunk loader, didn't it? Uh, I don't know if that exists still though. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Didn't it used to have a thing where you had to like feed it ender pearls or something to keep it chunk loaded? I don't know if that's been like re-implemented. But look, that thing's doing its thing, so that's cool. Fun times. Yeah, the sequencer is behaving a little bit better now, by the way. Like before it was waiting that 1200, that full minute before it would start mining after it moved forward. But yeah, see how it's see how it's well aligned here? Yeah. Doing a good job. Very very functional at this point uh and obviously you could uh you could absolutely expand the number of minor things there so like if you wanted to get like really big you could mine like you know more nine by nines on either side of it and then you wouldn't even have to adjust the logic um if you wanted to add nine by nines to the front the only logic you'd have to change is the counter here because this is this counter number is how many blocks forward to move before you start mining right um, and then, uh, this count, this sequencer here is how many blocks forward to move, right? So you would basically just like, if you added nine more blocks to the front of it, you'd add nine more white spaces here and then make this 18 and then it would move forward 18 blocks before, right? And that would be cool. Not too shabby. Um, so what I'm thinking is maybe instead of that timer, which is cool, but we can use a sequencer again, right? Um, so we want that to be a total of probably, I'm gonna say like roughly seven minutes. Um, Cause let's say moving forward takes one minute and then this runs for five minutes and then we'll have an extra uh, couple moments of, of buffer time. So seven minutes, right? So that would be, um, so 1200 ticks is a minute, right? So seven minutes would be 8,400 ticks, okay? Uh, so if we made this uh, delay 1,200 like we did up there, right, um, that would be cool. And then we would do uh, one, two, three. So like I'd want you when I when I give you the pulse, right, uh, loop the cycle all the time, restart on redstone pulse. I think that's what I would want. Uh, no, loop the cycle when redstone is present, restart on no signal. That's what I want, right? So when I turn on the redstone signal, I'd, I'd like you to activate the sequencer, right? So that would be first thing on for a minute, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minutes. So like make the sequence length eight of it being off. Uh, it might want to be seven, sequence length of seven, and that would be cool, right? So I replace this with this sequencer. Let's wait for this to finish mining before I do that. And then we should be really good. And I might expand the number of miners I have. I might do like on either side. So if I wanted that, uh, what I'd need to do... It's drill is what it's called, right? Uh, I would need 81 times two, right? So let's go with, I've currently got eight. So that would be 73 to get me up to 81. I need more andesite casings, which I should probably set up some auto crafting today and create. That would be a good thing to do for sure. Um, that would definitely be a good thing to do. All right, once this thing is done mining, we'll test out this new sequencer, and then we'll be good to set up some auto crafting. And then I want to get into how do we chunk load this thing. Like I said, I think the only option is this create chunk loading mod. Um, it, there's not a lot of documentation how it works. It says it chunk loads while the machine's moving. I hope that doesn't mean it only chunk loads when the machine's moving. 
Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, but we'll play with it and see. I, my goal is just to make sure that this thing can run when I'm not here, because I don't want to sit here and babysit it anymore. All right, so let's try this, right? So I want you... Right, you do that thing. I'll leave you off for now. That should be fine. And then sequencer, do that, right? So now uh, loop the cycle when redstone is on, right? Restart on no signal. So it's not doing anything right now. Um, when I activate you, he should pulse right away, right? Maybe. We'll find out. See, so yeah, that stack negative one sticks around for a minute sometimes. Let's come back in a minute and see if it starts moving, because it should after a minute. But what's weird is, like, this one was doing the same thing. But if I... Let me turn you off for a second. I'm going to break and replace you. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'd like it as soon as the loop starts to be on, but at least with this one, you're only waiting a minute instead of waiting seven minutes, so that's better. So let's come back in a minute. Yeah, the sequencer wasn't working for some reason. Uh, it, for whatever, it said it was making a signal, but it wasn't triggering this moving, so I just placed a lever there to make sure that nothing was broken, and now it's fine. Just being weird. Okay, uh, so I'll figure out some kind of thing to keep that running um, that I can easily turn off. Uh, as as needed okay so as stated what should happen is as soon as it gets to its next position here it should shortly start mining right not too long see you're on you say you're on step zero on shouldn't you be emitting a redstone signal now did sequencers break because that's what was happening over here. My sequencer said it was on, but it, like, wasn't really. It's weird. I'll come back in a second and see what it happens. Nope, it started moving. There we go. Yeah, so it just needs to go to step one, I guess. Even though it says it's on, it's not really on. Maybe that's just a whale of tooltip. Like, telling you the wrong thing. But anyway, it's working. Yep, we're cool. So, I'm going to let this run. Uh, technically, I don't need you anymore. Um... What I could have, what I could do is extend the sequence length here. I just, it would have to be long enough. I don't know if that would be enough, right? Might be too many. Um, but we'll see. Uh, for now, let's go, let's go back home and start doing some automation stuff. But theoretically, I want this to finish mining before I leave. So I will let this finish and then come back, right? Because um, I can't really, the only other chunk loader uh, is this guy, right? And I can't. I mean, I could just, like, chunk load a bunch in it, but that doesn't sound fun. That sounds boring. I think I want to see how this works. But in order to get this, we're definitely going to need another star. So we'll be back. All right, we're back. So what I want to do is automate some of the things in here today so that I can request them via Apply Their Logistics. Uh, so for that, there's going to be a few things uh, that need doing. First off, we need to run and apply their Logistics cable all the way over there. Uh, we could use the singularities, but that's, like, that's too close to do singularities, I think. Um, so what I'm basically going to do uh, is, is probably in my sub-basement do this. I'm just going gonna, gonna to run a cable. Uh, though now looking at it, the cabling I've done is a little bit sloppy, but that's par for the course for Direwolf. Why am I hearing an Enderman? There shouldn't be any Enderman nearby. Right? How is there an Enderman nearby? You hearing that, or am I crazy? Nope, I definitely hear an Enderman. But like... I've got the thing that means no mob spawn. And I'm not seeing them on the map. Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. Um, so yeah, we will uh, probably wind up... Let's see, you're doing that. Is that what I did? Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, I see. Um, what I could probably do... What I could probably do is... Why don't I tap that guy into maybe this channeling over here? How's that sound? Because you're only using four of eight channels at the moment, and that includes the, the wireless dude. So how about we just do that? So I'll grab some cables. 
right? Because you're really only using, you're not even using any, any channels. Cool. And then that would clear up these channels. And then we still have infinite range, presumably. Cool. Uh, and then what we can do is get some more dense cable, and we're going to want a P to P. And then we're going to want more, and we're going to need a lot of Fluix cable, like a real lot. Uh, probably like at least another hundred, just because we have to run all the way across there. Yeah. Um, and then let's get our mining laser. And I'm going to put that in three by three mode. Cool. And then what we can do is just head straight across, go underneath our stuff there. And then we should be right under our workshop now. Hey, hey, look at that. We are. Sweet. I accidentally mined through the floor, but that's okay. I can, I can replace those. Beautiful. Hey, look, there we are. Cool. And then that's how we'll get our AE system over there, right? So let's just get our dense cable plugged in. And this will just be um, a nice line that will P to P. And then we can do this. And if I wanted to tap in some quartz, fibers that would probably be a super convenient way to connect up the power there right so now this guy's got power uh, from the adjacent cabling and because it's quartz it's not interacting with channels at all and then we can just run this cable all the way across here and then more cables I knew doing this and messing this up would bite me later. Wow, there's a lot of gaps there. I did not expect that many. Not terrible. Not terrible at all. All right, so now let's figure out where we actually want this cabling to run to, okay? So there's a couple places that we're gonna wanna automate things. Number one, I definitely wanna automate here. Um, now the trick is going to be that we have a barrel uh, and a barrel, and these two barrels need to get different things that are part of the same recipe, right? So like oak planks will go in here always, and then it'll either be andesite or brass that goes in here, right? And that's how those two are going to work. Um, so what I should do, if I were to put a laser node behind them, would that look cool, do we think? Like if I put a node here and a here uh, and then did that, would that look pretty okay? Yeah. From the front, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Trying to keep trying to keep the aesthetic of this beautiful building. Uh, probably probably not doing a great job, but I will try. Uh, so then, basically here, uh, we would want to have a node happening, right? Um, and then for this barrel, we could either make this an interface directly to feed directly into the, the thing. Yeah, because I'm thinking anything we make should feed into the AE system, right? So if I break this, is this actually a gearbox? It is. It's doing something that's semi-important. So, and then we have a wall behind it. <laughs> so how would I get channels to that guy? Are you all gearboxes? You really are, aren't you? 
Yeah, lots of gearboxes back there. So getting channels back there would not be easy. What in the what is going on here? Excuse me, zombie. Explain to me how you have spawned here. Where did he come from? I thought my uh, thought my thing did a pretty good job of not letting dudes like that spawn. Now, in fairness, we did update the pack. This is the latest version that just came out. So maybe there's something weird with the Mega Torch going on. Maybe there's some kind of new spawn rules happening. Look, there's a zombie coming all the way over from there. All right, I'm just sleeping through the night. And I hear Enderman sounds again. But yeah, this, this zombie was all about getting to me. Look, buddy, if you want, that's fine. That's on you. All right, let me think about how I can get this to be an interface and have the cable run for it. Because um, I assume I won't be able to do a facade version uh, of, of some of this stuff. But we'll see what I can come up with. All right, so what I'm thinking is I can, I can cable facade polished granite. And that would probably be sufficient. So what I can do here then is put this here, right? Can't I, can I place? Yes, I can place that there. Uh, and then we can just run some, some smart Fluix cable uh, back here and then run it down, right? And then we'll keep it looking halfway decent with uh, like that. That's that's fine, right? Like that's 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 cool. Uh, and then smooth stone, we would also need a, a facade for you, just so that like the building kind of stays nice looking, a little bit, a little bit nice looking, right? And then that should be able to be brought online. Cool. Um, so what I'm thinking is I would, I would up from here do this and let me get my memory card because we're totally going to need that ready to go so shift click you to set the new configuration still don't know where that enderman is hiding but i can hear him which is super fun okay and then you can just run up from the basement and hit the ceiling of this room and then any cabling that needs to run uh, can be done from there. Cool. So then we load up uh, this guy, load the memory card, and that should be cool, right? And then over here is where we're going to want uh, one set of cables. Now I got more cables coming, right? Excellent. Good job, me. So then running this across here, should bring us online, in theory. Uh, and if I'm right about that, that means that you are online now and any items that go in there will zap right into the AE system. And that should be cool. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then you guys over here need to be connected to each other. So I might as well bind you to you, right? And then you're gonna get inserts with a filter and your filter will be brass ingots or andesite ingots, right? Or andesite alloys. Um, so manual item application. The other thing you might need at some point in the future is sturdy sheets. Uh, no, probably not. Uh, copper. Copper might be a thing. Yeah, we should throw copper in there because uh, copper casing is a thing, and that should be cool. Cool. So copper ingot could also be a filter here, right? And then you would be an insert with a filter. Oops. And you're going to be uh, oak, right? Perfect. Good, good, good. Uh, and then this guy is currently bound to him still, right? Beautiful. Uh, so can I connect you up to him? I can. Great. What is going on with this Enderman sound? Enderman keep trying to show up and do things. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll move this up one. 
connect him there so you can see the lasers connecting. Uh, we'll have a barrel here and you'll just be the uh, the old extract. 32 items half a second, that, that should be fine, right? Uh, and then we can have a pattern provider that sits here and then you can be cabled up to that. So now if we pop home, we should be able to make uh, quite a few things, right? So casings, uh, we're gonna wanna know that you're a thing. So you're gonna just be oak logs plus andesite casing, right? That's casing. Uh, brass casings would be brass ingots, right? And copper casings would be copper ingots. Cool, and they go into the barrel pattern provider. Good deal. So now what'll happen is, right, um, when we go to craft it, it'll put its items in here, right? So let's demonstrate this. I'll take this out for a sec. So let's say I wanted like, you know, 100 andesite casings. Cool, it's gonna take 100 oak logs and 100 andesite alloy and put them in there. And then the 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 laser IO thing will extract them out and insert the oak into this barrel and the andesite alloys into this barrel, and then they'll start doing their thing. And then the casings will go directly into the A system courtesy of the ME interface. How cool is that? Sweet. Okay. Uh good deal. Good deal. Now, should we do something similar with the vertical gearbox? I think, uh, or, or, or with uh, with the mechanical press, that would be cool. I like that plan. So let's do that. So you go away. I don't know why I have so much copper in my inventory, but that's a thing that happens sometimes. Uh, what I could do, what I could do, if I just break that dude, can we just, um, on the up, right? Let's get more item cards. That shouldn't be a problem for us. Okay. So on the up, right, you will insert on white, extract on orange. Okay. And then on the down, you will extract on white, insert on orange. Cool. So up, We'll, we'll insert on white, extract on orange, down, we'll insert on, we'll extract on white, insert on orange. And that will have a similar barrel dude sitting right here. And then you can have a pattern provider that can probably sit right here. Is that cool? Good deal. And then you'll have brass sheets as a recipe, okay? And that can go in there. Now I'm not sure if this thing is smart enough to uh, to do that appropriate. You know what I could do? You know what I could do? Thinking about it. What if I foregoed the barrel and we just made it the interface? That could be cool. So follow me on this, right? Uh, we don't need to extract no more, right? If we don't extract anymore, um, the down would insert on orange, the up would extract on orange, which is fine, it can be orange. And then we had the pattern here. No, because the pattern, no, it won't auto insert. Right, 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 right. So no, we do need that. So what we need, what we need is another node here with these guys connected, right? So that on the up, we would uh, insert on white extract on orange on the down 
we would extract on white. Okay. Um, and then here we would insert on orange. Okay. And then you've got your barrel and your pattern provider and your cables. Right? So now what will happen is the node will extract from the barrel, insert into the uh, depot, and then extract from the depot and insert into the pattern provider. Cool. And then I'm thinking all we need to do on here is what's extracted is going to be filtered and it's going to be brash sheets are the only thing you're allowed to extract. Cool. And then that pattern can go in there. So then if we go over here and check out brass sheets and say we wanted 10 of those, boom, how cool is that, right? And then it's extracting the brass sheets, putting them back in the pattern provider, and we're cool. And then I might do something similar with brass creation for the basin, and then we'll see whatever, whatever else we might need to do for automating this. But at least for now, we have some of the more common things that we need fully automated, and that'll be good. All right, let's wrap up here, come back next time. We're gonna shift gears a little bit because there's a lot we need to do. Um, I'd like to get nether stars, uh, so that might be a thing we start working towards pretty soon. Uh, I have ideas for that. I have, neat, I have hopefully ideas. Are there, just wanna make sure, wither. So not wither skeleton, uh, I was hoping for that. Um, I wonder if these guys, gate pearls from gateways to eternity. There's no wither skeleton version of them because that would be cool. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. I wonder how easy it would be to add that. I don't know. We'll look into it. For now, Delta might sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. Um, we're gonna we're gonna figure out we're gonna figure out some stuff. For now, take it easy.